when we engineer businesses, if they're brick and mortar, they're digital, they're all different, national, international, it doesn't matter. But traditionally, if they're brick and mortar, they have an epicenter of a zip code. I learned this from Grant. This is like unbelievable, the power behind the promotion. So for me, I break the promotion down to seven promotes. Promote who you are so people know you. Those that don't know you can't flow you. Better known beats best. If you're better known, you'll attract more attention than if you're the best. There's no excuse, you can't say, well, I don't have to promote because I'm the best. Yeah, better known is gonna beat you. They're definitely gonna get bigger than you. So promote who you are, promote what you do, promote who you do it for. So many of you are like, oh man, I can't make enough money. It's because you're promoting and doing business with the wrong people. You need to promote to your best people. In fact, how many of you by a show of hands can think back in the last six months of this year, can you can think of one person that you did business with, one person where you're like, oh my God, if every one of my customers was like this, my whole life would be better. Just raise your hand if you can think of one person. Exactly. Now, what have you done with that one person? Have you thought about how you met them? Have you thought about what you said to them? Have you thought about what they were wearing? Have you thought about what you were wearing? Have you thought about where you showed up and where you communicated? Who greeted you to them? And what was that person doing? And what did you do with that person? Have you thought about what you said and what they said and how you responded and how they responded? Have you thought about when you went there, what you were wearing, what you said to them, how you showed up? Have you broke that one relationship down across a hundred different pieces of information and ask yourself, how many other people like that person are within my radius? Because here's what I can tell you. When we engineer businesses, if they're brick and mortar, they're digital, they're all different, national, international, it doesn't matter. But traditionally, if they're brick and mortar, they have an epicenter of a zip code. They usually do business with 22 minutes to 3.8 miles within the zip code. And on average, they have six different zip codes servicing that business. Now you wanna know what research does, it starts going through there and saying, what's the demographic information? How many competitors are in there? How many dollars are spent in that market? What's the competitive market that mirrors that, that maps that? And you start going through and looking at those zip codes and all of a sudden you're like, okay, what's the market share per zip code? And all of a sudden you say, this zip code has 38% of your business. This zip code has 12% of your business. This zip code has 8%, 2%, 0.05%. And you ask the question, why did some of your zip codes deliver more customers to you that are the better customers than the other zip codes? And then the smart people go, oh, that's because we have industrial in our zip code. Okay, the obvious stuff will jump out at you. But then all of a sudden, once you peel to the obvious stuff, which is probably about 15 different variables, you get into the other 15 or 20 variables. Like who in your office lives in the zip code and can't stand working for you? See, we get that we interview the team. And even though they're on your payroll and they work at the dental office and they're your primary hygienist, they go to church in their market when people ask how they like working for Dr. Smith. She's like, I hate it. So you can spend all the money you want, but you ain't gonna out promote a team of people that can't stand you. So as you start whittling it, whittling it, whittling it, and all of a sudden you find the things that are the most successful and you start duplicating those things like, if we did business with one person that was unbelievable, how do we get in front of 100 people like that? And then there's a process to get in front of 100 people. So you really gotta fixate on what works because I promise you there'll be enough stuff that doesn't. And then you go home and throw up all of your family about Oh, Johnny let me down and I'm so upset about this and now I gotta fix that. You don't go home and talk about how do we get 1,000 of the single greatest client we've ever done business with. Let's go call a client right now and bring them in and say, how do you help us find people like you? How'd you end up being so remarkable? You will find what you spend your time thinking about and talking about more of. What you think is what you say, what you say is what you do, what you do is what you're known for. Now, you get the seven promotes. You're promoting what you do, promoting who you do it for, your perfect client, promoting the impact that you're gonna create, promoting your passion. Now you're gonna promote, what, what do I get for coming and joining your team? Like, I wanna attract the perfect employee. So I start promoting what the attributes, the competencies, the contributions of the perfect employee. I'm looking for people who are on time, looking for people who are ambitious, looking for people who wanna learn, looking for people who know how to train, looking for people who wanna be respectful, looking for people that wanna be an example, looking for people that wanna grow and scale and create massive money. See, I'm only talking about what I want. I never talk about what I don't want because what I talk about, I get more of.